In this video, we will solve coin word problems using a system of equations. So let's look at a few problems. I'm going to model one problem from start to finish, and then I'll model the setup of four additional problems, so hopefully you get the hang of it by the end of the video. For those of you who are taking notes on our note pages, this is the second model problem on note page number six that you already have. We started it in our previous lesson. Okay, let's begin. Kelly's piggy bank contains 96 coins made up of nickels and quarters. How many nickels and quarters does she have in the piggy bank if the worth of all coins is $12? Okay, let's look at the important information here. Kelly has 96 coins, they are nickels, and they are quarters. We want to know how many nickels and quarters she has if the value of all of those is $12. Now this is a great candidate for a system of equations because there are two things that we do not know. We don't know how many nickels are, there are and we don't know how many quarters there are. The great thing is when I set up my let statement I can use two variables. And I'm going to let n equal the number of nickels. And I'm going to let q equal the number of quarters. Now if we're going to use two variables, we're going to have to come up with two equations. The first equation can be rather easy. Kelly's piggy bank has 96 coins. So this would be number of coins plus number of coins is equal to 96. So coins plus coins equals total coins. The second equation is going to be a little bit more complicated and that has to do with this. The total value is $12. Now I don't know if you remember when we did this a while back, but there was something that I would say in class all the time and that was number times value equals total. That was pretty important and we used that a lot. So we're going to do the same thing here. If I have n number of nickels, then the value of n number of nickels is 0 0.05n. That's 5 cents per nickel times the number of nickels. So number times value plus 25 cents per quarter. And the value of all that is $12 and zero cents. Now if you're like me, I would prefer to do this problem in pennies rather than dollars. So instead of saying 0.05n, my preference is to go 5n. That's 5 cents per nickel plus 25 cents per quarter. Now if this is going to be in pennies, this is going to be in pennies, then the $12 needs to be in pennies as well. So that would be 1,200 pennies. Okay, now that I have my two equations, I must decide how I want to solve this. I could do graphing, but it's not really efficient in this problem. I could do the substitution method, which actually would be quite easy for this, or I could do your addition or subtraction method. I think I'm going to do the addition subtraction method. So I think I'm going to start with this one. And what I'd like to do is I think I'd like to multiply this whole thing by negative 5. Now I'm doing that for a reason. This is going to give me negative 5n minus 5q and now I just have to do negative 5 times 96 and I'm going to bring this other equation that I have right over underneath. So I already have this equation and that's going to be 5n plus 25q is 1200. And now I can just add these two equations together. These will cancel. This is going to give me 20q is equal to, uh, let's round this up to negative 500. So that would be 700 is the difference, so 720. And let's divide both sides by 20. 
I think I'll cross those off, make my life a little easier. So Q is equal to, let's see, 2 goes into 7 three times with one left over. 2 goes into 12 six times, so that would be 36 quarters. Now I'm going to take that 36 and I'm going to put it back into any of these equations right here. I think I like this one. n plus q is equal to 96. n plus, now I'm going to take that 36 and I'm going to put it right in here. And that means n is equal to 60. So what I think I'd like to do is I'm going to bring these two answers back up to the top. So the number of quarters is 36. And the number of nickels is 60. Our check for this can be very easy. Our check can be, first of all, do these add up to 96? And that is true. We do add up to 96. The other thing that you can do is you can say, OK, 5 cents times 60. And we're just going to multiply that. And that's going to give me $3. And I'm going to take 25 cents and multiply that by 36. And that gives me $9. And all together, when I add those two, I get $12. So I know we have 96 coins, and I know we have a grand total of $12. So this one I solved for you completely, start to finish. The next four, I would like to just practice setting them up. OK, so we have Sara. And Sara has 26 coins. They are made up of quarters, and they're made up of nickels. If she has $5.10 total, how many of each coin does she have? So Sarah has 26 coins altogether, they're quarters and nickels, and she has $5.10 total. So there are two things that I don't know, quarters and nickels. So let's let Q equal the number of quarters. And let's let N equal the number of nickels. Okay, if I have two variables, I need two equations. First equation is easy. Sara has 26 coins. So if she has 26 coins altogether, then coins plus number of coins equals total number of coins. So Q plus N equals 26. So we're done with that part. The next part is that she has $5.10. And again, Number times value equals total. If you remember that from when we solved word problems before, then this will be a piece of cake for you. So you're either going to do 25 cents times the number of quarters plus 5 cents times the number of nickels equals $5.10, or my personal preference, which is to do it in pennies, 25 cents Q plus 5 cents n equals 510. Basically, these two are the exact same equation. It's this one multiplied by 100. Why 100? Because there's 100 pennies in a dollar. So to change it from dollars to cents, you can just multiply this whole thing by 100. OK, let's try another one. So Ryan has 51 cents in pennies and nickels in his pocket. The number of pennies is three more than the number of nickels. How many of each coin does he have? So we have Ryan, and he has 51 cents in pennies and nickels. So those are my two unknowns. Now this next statement is kind of interesting. The number of pennies is three more than the number of nickels. That's going to be really important. We might have to do a little writing right above the words on that one. All right, let's set up our let statement. Let P equal the number of pennies. And let N equal the number of nickels. OK, 
he has 51 cents altogether. So you can either do 0.01p plus 0.05n equals 0.51. But again, my preference is to do it in pennies. So 1p plus 5n equals 51. The next equation is going to be a little bit more complicated. Now, I'm a huge fan of writing right above the words. So that's what I'm going to do in this problem right here. So here we go. Let's go word for word. Are you ready? The number of pennies. What do we call the number of pennies? So we're right here at the beginning of the sentence. The number of pennies. Well, that's P. Is. What's is in math mean? Uh, that means equals. Three more than. Three more than. That means we're going to be adding three to something. We're adding three to something. Three more than the number of nickels. Well, your number of nickels is N. So your second equation is going to be P equals N plus 3. So given these two equations, my guess is I would probably use substitution and put this binomial right in place of that P. Easy problem to solve. Let's take a look at another one. This one is about Ethan, and Ethan has $23 in quarters and nickels. Twice the number of nickels exceeds the number of quarters by 15. Okay, you know why I chose this problem, because it has the word exceeds in it. How many of each coin does he have? All right, let's start off with a let statement. Let Q equal the number of quarters, and let N equal the number of nickels. First equation is pretty easy. We've got $23.75. So either 25 cents Q plus 0.05, and that's something you got to be careful of. Biggest mistake I see is a lot of kids not putting the decimal in the correct spot, which I almost did. So 0.05, I get a lot of kids putting 0.5. That would make a nickel worth 50 cents, so be careful of that. Okay, again, my preference is to do this in pennies. So 25 cents Q plus 5 cents N equals 2375. So 2375. Hard part, our next equation. Now, I don't know if you remember from our previous video, but I taught you something about exceeds. There's a word that always follows exceeds, and that is by. And if you remember, with exceeds, you do a minus. With by, you'd put equals. What that's going to do is take larger minus smaller equals the difference. Okay? All right, so let's go through and let's translate this. Let's start right at the beginning of the sentence. Twice the number of, so twice, that means two times the number of nickels. Well, that's N. So we have two times the number of nickels exceeds, there's your minus, the number of quarters, well that's going to be Q by 15. So your second equation would be twice the nickels minus the number of quarters equals 15. So bigger minus smaller equals a difference. So these would be your two equations. And actually, it doesn't matter how you solve it. I don't think one method is necessarily easier than the other. So I would either do substitution or I would do the addition method. Let's look at one last one. So Brenna went to her bank and withdrew $220 in cash from her account. The bank teller gave her 36 bills, and they were made up of $5 bills and $10 bills. We want to know how many $5 bills and how many $10 bills that she received. Okay, so she took out $220 in cash. She got a grand total of 36 bills, and they were made up of fives and tens. So $220 total, 36 bills total, in fives and tens. So we want to know how many fives and how many tens. So I'm going to say let F equal the number of $5 bills 
and I'm going to let t equal the number of $10 bills. Okay, first equation, $220 total. We're going to do the same thing, number times value, number times value. So 5 times the number of $5 bills plus 10 times the number of $10 bills equals 220. There's one equation. The next one is that the bank teller gave her 36 bills. So number of bills plus number of bills should give me total number of bills. So money plus money is money. And bills plus bills equals bills. All right, I'd like you to try some on your own. You will be trying page 415. I'd like you to do one through five. Now, because of our time limit, what I'd like you to do is set up first. So I want you to go through, set up all five first. Solve second. See how far you can get with the solving. My answer key will be on the website. Email me if you have any questions or concerns, and good luck to you.